2020 saw a ton of new tools from the likes of Milwaukee, Makita, DeWalt, Bosch, and more. But today we're going to dig deep into their 2020 tool patents to find out what they didn't release and what may be coming this year in 2021. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Brought to you by Ohio Power Tool. Pro tools, pro service, all of the best prices at OhioPowerTool.com. And Skillsaw, true to the trade since 1924. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. It's January 1st, 2021, and wow, does it feel good to say that. And on today's show, I'm joined by Nate of Dorsum Tool Reviews, who's made a name for himself by digging through thousands of Power Tool patents and coming back with some of the industry's best-kept secrets. Nate, thanks for joining us. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Going back and watching your Makita video, I saw a whole lot of tools you found or features or platforms that they didn't release this year, but I, I don't know that that's saying too much because Makita didn't release a whole lot of stuff this year. But let's talk about a few of those items. Was there anything in particular that you really hoped to see that you didn't? Yeah, I think I was hoping to see uh, the cordless framing nailer. I know a lot of people are asking for that on their platform, uh, as well as the cordless belt sander. Those seem like the two most useful tools that I found on their patents this year. Yeah, that framing nailer, you actually mentioned a technology that I thought was really interesting. Essentially, it's a flywheel, and, but the system can monitor the flywheel, so if all the energy isn't used to put in a nail, then it can dynamically adjust how much energy it uses to speed it back up, is that correct? Yeah, that, that was the gist of it because, I mean, you couldn't patent a flywheel nailer because those already exist, but you can patent certain mechanisms uh, within a tool that's novel and unique. Uh, and so that, I thought that was a really unique feature that would give them more runtime. Now, you also found a really interesting battery adapter that it looks like it made it so you could use their 18-volt batteries on their new 40-volt tools. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, depending on the tool, obviously it might not fit everything, um, but that would help bridge the gap between users that have a ton of 18 volt batteries and want to get on the 40 volt platform. And of course, we haven't yet seen the 40 volt platform here in the States. Why do you think that is? Um, I'm just, I'm not sure exactly. I, I think it might be users not wanting to jump to a different battery platform. Uh, and really, I hope that adapter can, can help bring the 40 volt platform here. Speaking of battery platforms, you also revealed a patent for a 64 volt battery platform. I know we've seen pictures leak online of these batteries. Do you think Makita is looking to take on Milwaukee's MX platform? It certainly looks like that with the 64 volt batteries. And it may be that for the US, they're going to plan a 64 volt release and skip over the 40 volt line entirely. That's a fascinating idea. Okay, the last thing, the exoskeleton. I'm a huge fan of these things. I've seen a couple of them in person at trade shows but I've yet to actually see one on the job site. Do you think that Makita may be the first one to bring a working exoskeleton to the job site? I certainly think Makita may be the first major power tool company to do so. I've seen a lot of non-power tool company designs, um, but it really looks like Makita is working on theirs because they've filed a couple successive patents with refined designs. So I, I think they're definitely still working on this and hopefully we'll see it soon. Yeah, I really hope so. All right, let's move on to DeWalt. The first item that you found that did not come to fruition, but I'm desperate to see, is the motorized creeper with Bluetooth speakers. I'm trying to understand this because I know a lot of mechanics. This seems like an awful lot of luxury for a mechanic and I don't know if they care so much, but do you think this is something that's gonna happen? I'm not sure if it's gonna happen. I think a lot of uh, guys that work in their garage would love to have something like this. I mean, you might see creeper races across across the garage or down the street, maybe, if you got a couple guys with one. Um, but I was surprised at what didn't come out on uh, Stanley Black & Decker's Mac Tools line, because that's what most of their automotive power tools are really in. Okay, let's move on to their mower. They have a push mower that when I first saw your video and saw this patent illustration, I literally laughed out loud. This push mower, you can stand on it by moving the handle forward or something like that. What the heck is that I, thing? I really don't know what they're doing with this thing. It, it looks like OSHA would just have a field day with it, um, but I guess it's for people that have a, a middle-sized yard and they don't have enough room for storing a riding mower and, and they wanna be lazy. Who is going to actively step on and off a cutting deck? That seems like the worst possible idea. Honestly, not me, but 
there may be people out there. Speaking of bizarre OPE, you also found a FlexVolt rotation powered charging station. What the heck is that? Yeah, I really think that's going to be aimed at commercial users because people mowing their yard at home are going to have charged batteries. Uh, but maybe a commercial user with a zero turn mower, like which DeWalt just came out with, uh, they want to have some batteries charged on the go and they wouldn't have access to power. So I think that's the market they'd be looking for if they come out with that tool. So they don't have to worry about charging their batteries on a converter in their truck or something like that. Yeah, basically. All right, my favorite thing by far on your DeWalt patent digs was the Tadpole trike that, it's a device it seems that has its own battery platform that looks a lot like Milwaukee's MX, except that it's on this, again, a trike that you can sit on and ride and there's like 15 attachments and stuff. Tell me about this thing. Yeah, so that was one of the craziest patents I've ever found, and it looked like they're building it all around a new high-voltage battery system with built-in inverters into the battery. So since batteries are heavy, you can take it on a vehicle wherever you want and just plug into that. So it might breathe some new life into corded tools uh, and keep those on the job site a little bit longer if you have a convenient way to bring power to a remote site. I think the reason I got so excited is is exactly that, is that especially watching Milwaukee roll out MX, the idea of having clean uh, energy, which means I'm, I don't need to change oil, I don't have to have the fumes of gas, all that kind of stuff. Everything's instant on, you know what's gonna work when you get up in the morning. I love that idea, but when you get into these larger applications and need more power, you need bigger batteries. That's just all there is to it. And they're awkward, they're just big and heavy. The idea of taking just a crap ton of batteries putting them on a little trike that anyone can drive around the job site. And then of course, all these attachments you found, uh, turn it into things like a forklift and a, a plow. I mean, all kinds of, what else was it gonna do? Yeah, I, I can't remember all the different attachments, but it was basically anything you could imagine uh, on a small power platform like that. And the really interesting thing is big batteries are expensive. Uh, and what DeWalt is looking at doing is making those batteries compatible with electric vehicles and home power stations. So that's, I think their big angle on this is making them more affordable by having them usable in more places than just a job site. So at the end of the day, I can actually take these things, put them in our work truck and get us back home. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, from all the patents that I found and conglomerated that Stanley Black & Decker has on that, it certainly looks like that's what their angle is. So all that sounds amazing, but let's be honest, these are patents. What do you actually think the chances are that we'll ever see that whole trike come out? Uh, I'm not sure if they're super high, but I think it'll be definitely a few more years before we see something like that. Okay, let's move on to Big Red. Milwaukee released an absolute ton of tools this year across four different episodes of their Pipeline series online. However, based upon the videos that you released early in the year, there were still a lot of things that we didn't get. Now, there were some that you found that we got. We got the pin nailer, We've got the pack-out vac, the pack-out two-wheeled cart, the shelves, the drawers, that kind of stuff. Speaking of the pack-out drawers, though, you found a really interesting patent that was looked like a pack-out frame that would support three regular pack-out, looks like regular tool pack-outs, um, that would slide, they could slide in in the middle of a stack, but you'd be able to pull it out and that frame would keep it all together. I love that idea, but we didn't see that. What else didn't we see from the Milwaukee Packout platform? Um, from the Milwaukee Packout, we had a bunch of accessories that go on the top. We did see the work platform, which I didn't find in the patents, but they've also got sawhorse attachments and, and work holding attachments and other things like that that we may see in the future. Okay, I wanna talk about that portable power source you found. So around here, we have DeWalt's power station where we can put four flexible batteries in it and living out in the country, we have the power go out all the time. We use that thing to run a refrigerator. It does a fantastic job. I know that Ego has one, the Nexus, which is this amazing rig that you can put, I think, up to four of their huge batteries on it. And of course, Milwaukee's new MX Carry-On is almost here. That guy, of course, can take up to two of their huge batteries. All of these things seem to peak at 30, around 3,600 watts and then settle in around 1,800. So they all seem to be the same thing. Why would Milwaukee bring out yet another one that looks like it has similar specs, but for the M18 platform? Well, in my mind, Milwaukee wanted to launch the MX Fuel platform, and that carry-on power supply is probably one of the most widely demanded tools on their MX Fuel platform. So 
I'm thinking they wanted to make a big splash with that, and maybe if they see enough demand from users or a lot of people asking for M18 style one, then they'll move to that one as well. That actually makes a lot of sense. Hey, I want to talk about their rocket stick light. That, as weird as it is, I love their rocket lights. I think they're super portable, very useful, very bright, put light anywhere you need it, and I love that. The stick light, though, it seemed unique in a couple ways. One, it had, because it had a really wide light source, that meant that you're gonna cut down on shadows with just one light, which I think is a big deal for a lot of people when they're working in confined spaces. But also, I th it was detachable too, wasn't it? Yes, I believe it was. And I think that's something, in my review videos, I've seen a lot of people actually comment on the rocket tower lights, I wish you could detach the light head. And that's not really feasible with a lot of the, the bigger ones, but for the M12 system, that makes a little bit more sense because you could put the battery right up on top and it's not too heavy and it's not gonna weigh the whole thing over and make it top heavy. So if there was a rocket light they were gonna do it with, it would seem like it would be the M12 platform. Okay, so whenever anybody talks about tools they wanna see come from Milwaukee, the number one item, no question, is always a track saw. This year, still no track saw. I haven't seen you show us any track saw patents or anything like that, but you did show us this clever system that you think may be related that uses sonar or something to tell you what angle you're about to cut through your piece with your saw? Uh, tell me more about that. Yeah, so Milwaukee has a patent for an angle finder, essentially, to figure out what angle your tool is going to uh, cut into or drill into a workpiece. So it's got two different sonar sensors spaced a known distance apart, and if it knows the distance between those two, and it knows the distance measured uh, from sonar or whatever other sensing element they're using to the workpiece, it can figure out through trigonometry what angle that saw or drill is going to cut into or drill into a workpiece. So I think that's something that we could be seeing with the track saw. I think they're waiting to make a huge splash with their system. Uh, because if they waited so long, it's gotta be impressive at this point. So I think that's a, an extra bell and whistle that they may have on their design. I think you're right. I think that they're doing exactly that. They're waiting to release a track saw until it's the king of all track saws. The reality is though, knowing Milwaukee fans like I do, it could be a mediocre half garbage track saw. And as long as it said Milwaukee on it, I think we'd all buy it. You're probably right. Okay, last on my list here is the MX platform from Milwaukee. I think the most shocking thing you showed us, which you showed us a lot, the most shocking thing was an AC adapter. So of course, the whole idea behind the MX platform is enabling light duty tool work on batteries, but you actually found a patent for an adapter that would allow you to plug these things in. Yeah, and I think part of the reason is those batteries are so expensive. If someone does have access to wall power, hey, why not use it? And if you've got another job site you're going to later in the day that doesn't have a power, uh, supply, then you can use your batteries. So I think that may be why they're doing it is just so you have a little bit more flexibility with how you do your work. That point of view makes all the sense in the world to me, I, but also kind of makes me wonder why didn't that come out when MX was announced? Why isn't that already there? Or do you think that that would distract from the idea of doing heavy duty work with batteries? I think it would be a distraction. And I think maybe they also looked at market analysis afterwards and decide it was a good idea. So they might be playing catch up a little bit. That, that makes sense. All right, so let's talk about all the other stuff you found for the MX platform, because this year we didn't see really anything new announced for MX, which is really frustrating because they've hinted at all kinds of stuff, but you found quite a bit. Tell us what was the most interesting thing you found in the MX platform? I think one of the most useful things might be the pack out hand truck that is powered. So they came out with the, the non-powered pack out hand truck and this MX Fuel version is essentially their sewer drum kit with the power treads without the sewer kit on it and it's just a dolly. So I think that would be really useful for moving heavy items, going upstairs uh, and things like that. All right, so do you see that sort of as their answer to all the extra weight that these batteries bring? Because would it make sense to be able to take your jackhammer and put it on one of these things and get it out to the job site or the same thing for their other larger tools? Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like they're thinking beyond just carrying tools though, because they've also come out with a cart patent or a, a material handling patent that can do scissor lifts and things like that for, for higher lifting, heavy lifting, and just things that are going to be really strenuous activities that will save you a lot of effort on the job site. I think what I'm getting at is that I'm all about us replacing even heavy duty tools with batteries, as long as they all include wheels and I can hop on them and ride them around the job site. There you go.
Now, the last patent video you put up was the Ego one where you actually found their Z6 zero turn mower fairly early on this year, which of course, it's now been announced. We've seen it, a couple of our friends have it and have tried it, it's turned out to be amazing. But there was something else you mentioned that Ego hasn't said anything about. Tell us about the robotic mower. Yeah, absolutely. The robotic mower patent that I found is pretty unique in their approach. All the other systems that exist right now use a boundary wire, and this one uses GPS. So to get the GPS accuracy they need, they've got an antenna that is on the stationary base station. Then they've got two antennas on the machine itself as it moves around. That gives them really great pinpoint accuracy. And so instead of having to dig and lay out a boundary wire, they can just drive the mower around its path that it's not supposed to go outside of, and then it knows where it's supposed to mow. So I think that was a great ingenious solution and it will be a lot more user friendly. So are you saying this would be something where I can use like my iPad and bring up Google Earth and draw it or will I have to walk behind the mower and kind of tell it where to go? Yeah, they actually had a, a Google Maps layout option on their patent design and they also talked about controlling it with a mobile device as well. All right, well, if their robotic mower is anything like the rest of the product line, I'm going to buy it. I have to have it. Plus, it's probably going to have the absolute best batteries and newest tech, and yeah, I'm a fan. Anyways, Nate, thank you so much again for joining us this week. I do appreciate it. No problem. I had a lot of fun. If you guys aren't already subscribed to Nate's channel, go do that right away. You'll find him at Dorsum Tool Reviews on YouTube. You can find all of his past patent videos. Plus, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss any new ones he may do, which we certainly hope he does. I want to thank Skillsaw and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.